Hello Capricorn Rising and welcome to your September Astrology and Tarot Horoscope. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Lisa Merrifield. I'm with Trails Edge Astrology and on this channel I strive to give grounded and practical astrological advice so you can live your best life. If you haven't listened to my 13-minute September overview, you might do that first. Um, in it, I outline the six transits that I think are going to be the most significant this month, and I have a link in there to um, some journal pages with the dates and the transits and some space for you to make some notes about how those might show up for you. And um, and also, I think it's really interesting to make notes on what actually did happen, um, even if it's nothing, or um, how you felt about something. Um, because astrology is cyclical and patterns come around again, it's super helpful to have a record of what showed up for you so that you can kind of trace the story through and, and see what it is you're working on and... Um, yeah, just trace the patterns. I think it's interesting. Anyway, I will, um, I'll also link those journal pages in the comments here, and I'll put a link to the, um, the September astrology workshop or workshop, the September astrology video, um, at the end of this, at the end of this, if you haven't gone and listened to it yet. All right. Um, if any of this, um, resonates with you, of course, please like, subscribe, um, share, comment, any of those things. Help the algorithm know that uh, this is interesting content. It helps me know that you're interested in what I'm producing and that this is worth the time. All right, so let's talk about the two transits that I think have the longest term impact on all of us in September. And the first one I want to talk about is Pluto re-entering Capricorn. So Pluto was in Capricorn between 2008 and 2023 consistently, and it's been back and forth between Capricorn and Aquarius um, in 2023 and 2024. So for you as a Capricorn rising, there has been some significant change in your core identity, in perhaps your body and your health, in perhaps the tools you use to get the work your work in the world done. All of those things have been up for revision um, in that 15 years when Pluto was in Capricorn, particularly when Pluto crossed your ascendant. I would I would suspect that at that time you had some real pressure and and potentially made some changes in how you show up in the world. So this fall, Pluto is back in Capricorn for the last time in 200 and some years. So we will not see Pluto back in Capricorn again in our lifetimes. Um, and so we're finishing up some work. There's there's some final work that we're doing between um, September 1st and November 19th in that, for you, first house space in your chart, that that core identity. Um, and and I don't think it's anything you haven't seen before, but definitely there's, there is the potential to be some pressure to finish up things that you need to finish up, whatever soul's evolution was happening, like you'll be finishing up those pieces. Um, this will be particularly true if your ascendant is around the final degrees of Capricorn, but I imagine all of us with Capricorn placements are going to feel this energy and be, be really, I know, like tying a bow around something. <laughs> so if there's work you know you need to do, now's the time to do it. Uh, the second transit I want to share with you is the eclipse on September 17th. So it will be in Virgo and Pisces, and eclipses are harbingers of change. Um, Anne Ortley describes it as a strobe light. The light goes on, um, you're doing your thing, the lights go off, you keep doing your thing, and the lights come back on, and everything around you has shifted. So um, so they tend to be be quick course corrections. And whereas other energy like Pluto going back into Capricorn, you can work with that. You can work with with Pluto and say, you know, I recognize that I need to make this change in my life, or I, I recognize that there is pressure for me to release in this area or to see this shadow that I haven't been wanting to look at. Um, but with eclipses, it, it tends to be more like more societally, more just like, like, Oop, now we're doing something different. Um, so, so it's a like a karmic course correction, and um, and for you as a Capricorn rising, this is happening in your third and ninth house, and 
it will show up strongest if you have planets around 25 degrees of Virgo or Pisces. But even if you don't, you're likely to see some kind of shifts or some kind of kind of um, some illumination that perhaps you haven't seen in the past. Some it's a lunar eclipse, and so it's likely to be something on the inside that then translates into you acting differently on the outside. And in your third and ninth house. It's something about thinking or communicating or exploration of ideas, something about the the balance between abstract thoughts and concrete thoughts, something about formal ritual and um, an informal ritual. It could also have to do with um, with siblings, either who are your biological siblings or who are your um, your found siblings, people that that are your siblings that that you, you think of like your siblings, but they don't have to be biologically your siblings. <laughs> that was a very long way of saying that. Anyway, so so something about that eclipse um, is likely to illuminate something for you. And again, depending on what you've got around the 25, 25th degrees of Virgo and Pisces, that will increase the chances of it really showing up in a really strong way. But I think all of us will see some of that energy, if not in our own lives, in the lives around us. Um, it's a full moon eclipse and full moons, you know, just in general, heighten energy and illuminate, um, illuminate things we perhaps haven't wanted to see. Um, and eclipses do that even more so. Certainly, you know, if you've got something to reveal to the world, like maybe that eclipse is a time to do it. Um, a story you want to tell, something like that. So those are the two transits I think are going to be the most powerful for us this month and um, or the longest ranging for us this month. I, the, uh, there are other transits that will be powerful. Um, and of course, it depends on how it hits in your chart, uh, but you would need a personal reading to to get the, those kinds of details. All right. So now let's see what Tarot and Oracle have to add to this story. Uh, we are going to read from the Crooked Cat Tarot. And from the Moonology Manifestation deck. All right, I'm going to pause, shuffle, and I'll be right back. All right, Capricorn Rising, I am back. So your opportunity this month is the Hierophant. And this is so interesting with those eclipses in your third and ninth house, because those are the houses of um, religion. The ninth house formal religion, which tends to go more with the hierophant, which is where the sun is right now, and then the third house is those those um, how you bring spiritual spirituality into your everyday life. Um, so, so I think there's an opportunity for some kind of um, of bringing some some um, spirituality or philosophy or maybe connecting to your higher self, something something to that effect. I think there's an opportunity this month with those eclipses in the third and ninth house for you to engage in. So yeah, so something something about um, yeah, about that about that kind of leadership, that that tapping into spirit or intuition. Um, I mean, it could be it, it could be just getting out into nature and just like like finding your place in all of it. But I think there's you know there's some real invitation to step into that um, that higher power or that that inner knowing, that higher self. Again, whatever whatever words work for you in that respect. But um, with the sun in the ninth house. Um, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's, that's, could be formal religion, does not have to be, but, um, but that could be a path or, or just that stepping into like, like listening to your higher self, listening to the longings of your heart, um, I think is really important this month. Um, for you, the challenge is the two of swords and the two of swords is all about not being able to see. So you're trying to make a plan and you can't see something. You're either you either can't see it because you don't want to see it, or you can't see it because um, you're not supposed to see it yet. So I think the the challenge is to you know what as I'm thinking about this, the hierophant, you know, stepping into that um, higher self, that spiritual place, that that inner knowing, divine knowing. Um, I wonder if the challenge is not going to be you want to see the path. And the path is not there for you to see. 
that also speaks to Capricorn or Pluto being in your first house. Um, one of the lessons of Pluto is, um, is that is learning to take the next right step, even though you can't see exactly where you're going. You don't know exactly where you're going. So I think that is a challenge for you, Capri Capricorn rising, that, um, that you're being asked to take steps and you're not quite sure where you're going. Uh, you can't see the path and, and there's an invitation to trust, which is hard. <laughs> so hard. So I, so I think I'm, I'm going to invite you to trust, to assume that if your heart is calling you in a direction, um, if your higher self is calling you in a direction, if your dreams are calling you in a direction, whatever, whatever guidance you're getting, um, trust that even though you can't see the path that you're moving in the right direction. And your to-do list, my friends, is the magician. And the magician is all about having all of the tools you need. So it, it again, it, go, it gets to that trust issue, that that tapping into the higher self, the 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 calling, the longing of the heart. You have the tools you need to step into and manifest whatever it is you are wanting to build. It doesn't mean it's going to come quickly, but it means that you have the tools. You don't need more education. You don't need to talk to more people. You don't need to read another book. You have the tools you need to make the move you need to make. You just have to trust. You have to step into that space of assuming that the universe is conspiring for your best interest and highest use and purpose. It's tough. It, I'm not I'm not going to say that it's really, that it's incredibly easy to do that, but there's, there's something about this and the universe wants you to know that, that you have the tools that you need to do the thing you need to do. All right. And your moonology manifestation card is the last quarter Leo moon lighten up. So it says, um, Drawing this card suggests that you need to lighten up a little. Happy manifesting comes from a happy place. Make a list of your blessings. So, so something about like as a Capricorn rising, and I'm a Capricorn sun, so I can speak into this, a Capricorn S U N. Um, so I can speak into it a little bit. As with strong Capricorn energy, we have the vision, we have the dream, we have the long term plan, and, um, and, we can be intense about it. And so I think that there's something about this um, really stepping into the unknown and really just trusting your instincts that you're being invited to, uh, you're invi being invited into this, this, um, this month, certainly, and maybe the whole time Pluto's in Capricorn. There's something about just trust, believe, do what you're called to do, take the next step without necessarily having to see the full plan. Capricorn Rising. I hope this was helpful. If it was, if you can like this video, subscribe, comment, any of those things that help the algorithm know that you're out there and you find this useful, um, makes me incredibly happy. And I, I also want to know you're out there. I love reading your comments. So um, good luck and let me know how this month goes. Bye.